and uh, I will present uh, today the event in Visible Monuments, Digital Memory, seven archaeological uh, sites of Thessaloniki becoming accessible through digital applications. Um, well, uh, the project uh, uh, it was an event uh, that um, it was um, uh, actually for the occasion, last September, for the occasion of the European Heritage Days, and um, it uh, only lasted uh, for one week, from 24th of September uh, 2016 until the 2nd of October. And it was uh, implemented in the framework of uh, the NEARC project. Well, the, the main objective of uh, this uh, project, for those of you who don't know where Thessaloniki is, is at the northern part of uh, Greece. So it's the second city of Greece. Um, digital uh, social media, the objective of the um, uh, project was the, to, um, to combine digital social media and mobile phone technologies in order to raise public awareness on antiquities in an innovative and an unconventional way. Uh, well, um, the, the thing behind that uh, was to find um, um, some archaeological uh, sites, some sites of Thessaloniki's rich archaeological past that uh, are actually unknown, or they are ignored, or uh, they, they, they don't exist in the collective memory of the citizens uh, of Thessaloniki due to uh, the, um, the way they, they, they are treated. Uh, for example, that uh, they are underneath uh, um, contemporary buildings or because of the lack of um, info, uh, uh, they, they, they don't, uh, they act, we actually don't see them. And um, the, the other thing uh, was, uh, the other objective of this project and um, the, 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 the challenge of the project actually was uh, how to involve people uh, to that. Um, we thought that uh, digital te technologies, mobile phones and tablets and uh, the engagement also through networking, social networking, would be the suitable approach for, the, for rebuilding these mnemonic maps of the residents of the city and to re-establish the hidden and forgotten memories in their daily life. Um, what we also did um, at the same time was a small evaluation seat and also a, a questionnaire, which is part of a PhD at the University uh, of Leiden in order to, to, to understand uh, how, uh, what people uh, actually uh, want and um, what do they like in that and um, to, to, to also uh, see how this thing went, uh, went finally. So, uh, these uh, seven um, archaeological sites, um, uh, it doesn't mean anything to you but uh, I will come back to that. Um, uh, were um, sites of um, uh, minor importance, actually, and uh, they, they don't apply to what we think about big monumentality and uh, great monuments. And um, um, all these inglorious uh, sites uh, uh, were um, fall into three categories, actually. The first one is sites that um, they don't uh, uh, exist. Or they don't exist. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, they don't exist right now because they were excavated. This is the Neolithic settlement, the um, International Fair of Thessaloniki, and um, uh, it was excavated in the early 90s. Uh, but uh, uh, because it, it, they thought that it was of no importance um, to the public, and so they built this horrible, this horrific uh, building, this conference hall which is more important to the city than the Neolithic site, which is uh, the first settlement of uh, the Thessalonian past. Uh, the other type uh, of uh, monuments that we had uh, in, in this um, application was um, Roman baths, uh, were sites actually that uh, are dug in rescue excavation in the 60s and the 70s, um, where we had the urban development of Thessaloniki, but they lie underneath in basements of a block of flats, hidden, actually non-accessible, and um, people uh, don't know anything about them, not, not having any info on that. Uh, this is the Roman Baths and um, the Sergius Pragamas Temple, which is actually the first, one of the first Christian temples in Thessaloniki. So it, it must have some importance to the mnemonic map of Thessaloniki. Uh, the, other part, the, the other category of monuments are monuments that are, are standing there and um, you can see them actually, but you, you, due to lack of information, um, you, you don't have 
uh, any access to that. It is the service of Thessaloniki, the Basilica of Hagia Sophia, and um, the last category is of memory of monuments that uh, actually stand in front of you, and you see they are massive, but you don't know anything about them. You are passing by and you ignore them completely. The one is the Gilan Mermer, which is at a, a very a big street and uh, with, uh, with a lot of traffic in Thessaloniki. And the other one is uh, the Kubiculum, which is a, um, a tomb, a small tomb, a burial, uh, at Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, at our own quarters. So, uh, what uh, we really wanted to do um, is to take uh, these monuments and the info we, we did and the stories we dug up from um, what we have found and uh, use uh, mobile technologies, but, but technologies that our people are familiar with and they are not intimidated and uh, they, they don't feel challenged. And so, uh, also we want it to be quick, cheap and very, very, very easy to use. So, what we did uh, was uh, to, uh, to print uh, QR codes uh, at uh, posters and put it in very specific sites, very close to these monuments, to these invisible monuments. So people would go and pass by into their everyday life and just get the chance to, to see that and scan it and find out what this is all about. Uh, these are the posters. The, the idea behind the posters uh, was to have a um, common um, digital, uh, common vision uh, identity. Uh, so, uh, what we did um, is uh, um, to have different colors for its monument and um, at the same time we want it to be subtle, linear, but to deline the, um, the monument uh, out of its ground plan. So, there they are. If you have a, a QR code scanner, you are very, very welcome to scan it and <coughs> find out uh, about uh, the action. There are also some leaflets of that at the stand of Niark, um, so you, you, you can search for that and also see what uh, different and the beautiful things there we are doing at NERC. So, um, these are the sites, but we don't have internet, so I cannot navigate you to that. And um, some numbers of the questionnaire, the, the talking numbers. Um, in uh, only just 10 days, we had um, 5,148 uh, 5, visits of the website. Uh, 68 of these visits uh, were made actually by smartphone and tablets, um, and the rest uh, was made uh, by uh, through PCs. Uh, something which means uh, that no, no, I'm sorry, people that um, um, entered um, uh, the database through the PCs uh, usually stayed more there. Uh, what we had, it, uh, we had also, I uh, forgot to tell you, that we had um, uh, a Facebook page, a Twitter page, and an Instagram page. But Instagram and um, uh, Twitter didn't work very well. On the other side, Facebook um, was a really hit because we had more than 1,200 uh, 1, 1, followers, and um, people are still liking the page until now. Um, so, and um, some demographics, um, uh, we had uh, 188 um, uh, questioners uh, filled in. Um, I, I forgot to mention that we gave a, a small gift uh, to people. We, we tried to, 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 to make them, to force them to, to fill in the questionnaires because it's really difficult to have people um, uh, taking part in the service. So, we, we did um, a small prom promotional bag, and that was uh, the gift. Um, uh, what uh, answers we had? We had 188 per, uh, eight, um, answers to the questionnaire. Uh, 184 uh, were Greek, and four um, were um, uh, answered the English version. Um, I don't know the nationality. Um, so, we had female, 60% female, 36 were male. I'm sorry, male, and 5% uh, uh, didn't want to answer. Um, the age group, that is something uh, very interesting. Uh, you see that 40% um, was at the age group 21 to 35. It's the category Katie, you, you were talking about. So that was something uh, that uh, also um, crime from Leiden um, took notice uh, on that, that um, the, this age group was uh, very eager 
to, to, to do uh, the um, um, application, um, uh, to take part to the event is better to say. Um, so uh, you can see some uh, data on, uh, on the education level and um, employment status. And um, uh, what is interesting is to see that uh, the participant uh, degree of learning from the invisible monuments. They thought that um, uh, almost 80% um, uh, thought that they learned something from this um, event. And uh, the satisfaction also um, of the participants uh, were actually close to 90%, which I think is something really good. And um, these two also are important. The desire of the participants uh, for this digital application to be used for other monuments and to be more permanent, and 99% said that yes, they would like that to, 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 to have it in Thessaloniki. And uh, if they recommend the app to someone they know, and 97% uh, said yes, that uh, they will recommend that. And uh, because of the questionnaire had a um, closed-ended and open-ended question, at the open-ended question, um, what you want to know is why uh, uh, they were interested in doing this. And um, most of them uh, answered that uh, they were interested because of the local history, and actually the history of the city of Thessaloniki. Um, a lot of them said uh, that they were a very um, that they had a personal interest uh, for the past. Uh, another thing was the curiosity and the general interest. Um, uh, a very um, important factor was the knowledge. They wanted to, to obtain knowledge. They wanted to know something more. Um, some of them said uh, that they liked it because it was um, original and uh, innovative. And last but not least, a lot of people came because of, of professional interest. Uh, they were um, either archaeologists or students or architects uh, or free freelancers. So, uh, yes, um, people um, uh, said, uh, really liked uh, the... Um, the event and uh, the app, and uh, the, we can say that because of the photos they uploaded to the Facebook, and they tried to be interactive about that, and they, they, they wanted to, to know more, and they answered to the questioner that uh, it is a pity that uh, we don't have such a thing in a permanent basis in Thessaloniki. So, uh, now you, you will allow me to read uh, the conclusion marks. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm finishing, just to be sure that uh, I make everything uh, clear to you. Um, as, uh, I said the use, uh, as I said at the beginning of the, this presentation, the use of a, a common technology which people are familiar with and from which they do not feel intimidated or challenged was a deliberate decision. The results of our experiment proved that it was the right choice to use applications which are targeting at the average person on the street and have a predominantly cultural and heritage content, as it is well established that often culture is conceived as bordering to elitism. Practically, the event, designed and executed successfully, as it turns out, uh, was an invitation for new media and technology to experience the past, not in a static and educational manner, but rather as a playful um, discovery executed within a technological comfort zone. The result was to reconnect people's everyday lives with distant and unfamiliar, unknown stores of the city in which they are living. As technology was the new inviting means to support the reintroduction of the past in everyday life experiences, our event op opens up a largely uh, untapped resource in Greece, excuse me, <coughs> of uh, cultural technotainment with a particular emphasis on historical heritage. The use of new technologies and social networks for the dissemination of, of archaeological information is not a novelty in itself. It can be seen from visit to museums and monuments to the general public and um, information about archaeology and forms a distinct part of the plea for the democratization of knowledge. However, as in politics, technological accessibility and connectivity do not automatically increase democratization. They increase control equally in contemporary heritage, uh, the access of different public groups and communities of stakeholder information to knowledge, even to the management of heritage, is considered almost self-evident. In the background of the revolution brought by technological new practices in archaeology, there is a growing concern for the role of archaeologists in creating a theoretical framework in which the new technologi the technological possibilities will be implemented 
In a liberated democratic way, we should seek the cultural and political context where archaeological information is produced and used. And so we, we should contextualize the managing of the archaeological heritage itself, but above all, we should emphatically empower the public who receives this information. This last point is the greatest challenge for Greek archaeology and probably the most difficult to be carried out given the particular conditions in which archaeology and heritage are practiced. At this uh, point, um, I would uh, like to um, hear our, um, all the uh, addresses you could use. Um, I, I would like uh, to thank Rico, except of me and uh, the authors of uh, this presentation, a series of people will work to implement that. And I want to say that it is a collaborative work. So we have to keep that in mind also. So, thank you. <laughs>